Your referee for this bout is Kevin Nix. Introducing first from the blue corner, fighting out of BJJ Spokane in Spokane, Washington. He is a freestyle fighter with a record of 18 wins, only two losses. He stands in a 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing at 170 pounds. He is a Strike Force veteran. Please welcome Lyle Fancy Pants Beerball. And introducing his opponent from the red corner, fighting out of Marcus Aurelio team in Delray Beach, Florida. He is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighter, standing in at 5 feet 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 168 pounds. He has a record of 21 wins, only nine losses. He is a USC veteran. Please welcome Marcus Maximus Aurelio. Aurelio and Beer Bomb. I'm hoping this was a barn burner. Let's take a quick look at the tail of the tape before we get action underway with these two elite level grapplers. I'm hoping they decide to go to the floor and, and show us a little bit of that jujitsu skill. You gotta love Lyle's. Mar jumps. Marcus Aurelia, 38 years old. He's five years the elder of Lyle Beerbomb. Everything else almost equal except for that reach advantage. Let's see how it plays out. You've seen guys in their 40s now, they're in great shape. I think the nutrition and, and you know, things that are out there nowadays, I, I just believe age is just a number. Fight ready, fight ready, fight. I think that's crazy because I'm 34 and my back hurts <laughs> just talking. Uh, Lyle Beerbomb, fancy pants, of course, in those fancy pants. Marcus Aurelio in the red trunks with the black trim. Early leg kick from Beerbomb. Nice and light leg kick. There. Aurelio returns the favor and a front kick as well. Aurelia holding the center. Maybe we will see a slugfest between these right. two. Right. For the ground. There's the takedown from here, Mom. Lyle committed to that at the perfect moment. That was an excellent setup. He Absolutely. set that up perfectly. Sure. Drop down, and, and, and Aurelio does not prefer an off the bat game. So Lyle had to earn every, every inch of that takedown. He got it. Those shorts are blinding me. <laughs> the Brazilian Marcus Aurelio on his back. Originally had a foot on the hip. Now he's working a closed guard from underneath. Also tying up the arms underneath. His beer bomb looks to attack from the top. It, do it does draw attention from the eyes. Like I didn't even see an arm bar attempt. <laughs> Aurelio <laughs> controlling the wrist the there. Yeah, trying to set up the arm bar. Now interesting to note. We were talking to Lyle Beerbaum yesterday. Mm -hmm. He was telling us about that sharp elbow he has on the right hand side. He he fractured his elbow as a kid. Now he's oh, gonna have to is, defend uh, that elbow Yarnbar. right now with the armbar. But he fractured this elbow as a kid, and I guess as it healed up, he, he realized he has a razor sharp elbow on the right side. So he, obviously he can he throw from either side. It, but there's but that right away, really sharp elbow. Lyle knows what he's doing here, but Mar Marcus Aurelio is trying to get that right leg over the, the, the forehead or the face of Lyle Beerbaum. Lyle Beerbaum, excellent submissions, and he needs to defend that and keep a short head, long arms. Marcus Aurelio, very active on his back in the early going. Right now, to me, I would say Marcus Aurelio is staying busier. He's doing more from his back, but as he we've is. seen over and over and over, Judges do not like seeing fighters in bottom position. You, you almost have to get the submission in this high-level mixed martial arts if you're going to beat the guy from the bottom. It, it is difficult. Back to that right elbow of beer bomb. We were interviewing these fighters to, to get a little tidbits, you know, to talk about during the show. And his right elbow is ridiculously sharp. This is not a gimmick or something to talk about. If, 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 I would not want to get hit with that elbow. He said he's, he's cut open many an opponent with that elbow. And so he looks to, to have that short right elbow land on pretty much any of the the rest of his career, and I don't blame him. Aurelio continues to stay active underneath, working the legs high. We're at the halfway point of the opening round. Lyle Beerbaum has spent a lot of time in top position, not able to do a ton of damage thus far. If Aurelio is going to spin his hips and, and get a submission, now might be the time before they get sweaty. You know? Great point. Very dry in the early going. It's a little bit easier to lock in those submissions early on, but Beerbaum defending thus far, staying on top, working in short punches and elbows when he can. Aurelio showing crafty veteran moves underneath, tying up, controlling the wrist, avoiding absorbing too much Absolutely. damage. Absolutely. Look how nice Aurelio's uh, holding down the posture and not taking it. Still, he's got a, a giant weld on his left leg. The short hammers all just landed. Beerbaum is finding moments when he scores and scores well again with the hammer strikes again. 
So, uh, so Lyle is definitely doing enough to, to make a, so far, a, a clear-cut decision so far in this round. You know, still with a minute and 30 seconds to go, Aurelio has plenty of opportunity. Yeah, Aurelio doing a good job of using his feet on the cage to help control the position. I think he's grabbing it a little bit, and referee Kevin Nix is keeping an eye on it. I haven't seen a real official warning yet, but you can tell, you know, it is legal to put your feet on the cage. It's not legal to wrap your toes around them and grab and drag and pull. But Use it to push-pull that body. That's right. You can push with it, but you can't grab and pull, and Aurelio using that to his advantage right now. Meanwhile, Beer Bomb on top, continuing to deliver short shots where he can. There is that elbow, as you like to call it. That, that wasn't original, by the way. Did you just say yeah. elbow? He called it a elbow. Wow. Kenny Florian was mad, but I guess he wants you to retire. Right. No, you do not. You lose all. You lose naming you know, rights to your, to your body right. parts. Fair enough. The elbow is now officially Beer Bomb's. <laughs> it is laid claim, and you're going to have to go through fancy pants if you want to claim it. Beer bomb on top, landing more damage, short right hands, elbows when he can. Aurelio not taking a ton of damage. I mean, he's certainly bothered by what he's receiving, but not cut up, not beat up. But even with the right. submission attempts that he's had, he's certainly giving away this opening round by staying on his back. For the most part, protected himself very well, but there's brief moments where he's let his guard down for a few seconds or... To Beer Bomb's credit, he's found a way or found an inch. Hammer strikes, for the most part, really scored on Marcus Aurelio. Really reaching over, ground the left leg. Final 10 seconds of the opening round. It's a round which has seen Beer Bomb on top from almost the word go. A little bit of stand-up in the early seconds, but it's been all Lyle Beer Bomb since. And Fancy Pants takes the opening round quite clearly by staying on top. Let's take Great a look job. at some of the action from the first round. Again, Lyle Beerbaum was able to spend a lot of time in a dominant position. Marcus Aureli was active on his back, but probably not active enough to, to, to steal the round. Here we see the early going. There was some of that early striking. And again, as you said earlier, both expertly timed takedown as he ducked under the lunging Aurelio with the punch got the fight to the floor. Once there, you can see Aurelio trying to keep things tight, not absorbing too much damage, but Beerbaum finding every available opportunity he could to sneak in a little short right hand, a left hand, an elbow, maybe even the elbow every now and then. But it's a round that was clearly dominated by a lot of Beerbaum. And, you know, I've got to think that although he probably didn't get as much damage as he would have liked in that top position, there's no reason not to go right back there if he can because, yes, there were a few submission attempts, but nothing of any real serious nature. The submission attempts were early in the first round, and they still weren't that close. As they get sweatier, as he gets Look, more comfortable, as there. he has more success against a big name like Marcus Aurelio, right, I think he is not at all afraid to be on top against Marcus Aurelio and an excellent single leg takedown, as I say that. No way he's going to win this fight off his back. I mean, uh, like Marcus really sees that and is immediately getting his back against the fence and trying to get back up because he knows off his back he was presenting very little nice offense. Knee there, nice buddy. knee inside. All right, so he's round two here. Loud beer bomb. Fancy pants is in the fancy pants. Marcus Aurelio in the red trunks defending against the cage right now. Probably wants to stay on his feet if he can or get top position. Does not want to be underneath Lyle Beerbaum as he's he was for almost all of round one. You're right. Lyle's he's got to push that he's knee down. Guillotine. He doesn't have it without the knee across. Lyle's going to look to keep pushing that knee down. No, he doesn't. And, and Aurelio's going to try to get his right shin across the stomach of Lyle Beerbaum. And unless he can do that, he's not going to have this submission. Lyle's going to pop his head out here, and now he's on top, raining down those strikes. Good attempt by Marcus Aurelio, though. Yeah, Marcus Aurelio looked Marcus for Aurelio. something there with, with the guillotine choke, but Lyle Beerbaum remained very calm, very patient, controlled the legs, didn't allow Aurelio to move the guard. Right, kept his hips high and pushed that knee down. And now Lyle Beerbaum is in top position, landed a few short punches. He's putting his hand over the mouth of his opponent, disrupting the gangster. breathing. That's gangster right there. It really there. is. It really is. It's the little things that mean a lot to Lyle Beerbaum, but good for him. Marcus Aurelio does have the feet on the hips, a great position to kick away. Instead, he's going to roll for an armbar. The cage with a little bit oh, of initial. Bleeding. Look at the nasty bleeding. cut there. Nasty cut over. Uh, maybe I see that, some photographers that. wiping blood away from him. That right. thing is gushing. That is bad. It that is, is a bad cut. Nasty. And Kevin Nix is already eyeing everywhere. the cut. The referee Kevin Nix is eyeing the cut, and Lyle looks to work on it with a big elbow. Oh, there is down blood down his back. It's back. unbelievable. It's all over the canvas. Marcus Aurelio wonder, is gushing. I wonder if that was the elbow we talked about. 
And this is a slick, waterproof canvas. It's not like blood's going to soak into this. You know what? Give referee Kevin Nix credit, though. He's watching okay. it. It's not going into the Aurelio's working that guillotine. With the guillotine choke. That Our is, man, there's a possible guard. submission. Oh, wow. Lyle Beerbaum oh, needs to keep gosh. his hips high and keep his he's head down. He needs to keep his hips high and his head down. Beerbaum is actually fine right now with his head flat on the top of his head flat. Uh -oh. He needs to keep the top of his head flat and pressure forward and let Aurelio use his know, energy. Tight. Lifting tight. his head up there is not Very an tight. excellent defense. Also, Aurelio needs to get to his right hip. Oh I don't think God, it's tight. Look at this picture of violence. I don't think it's tight. I no, think it's I don't tight, think it's tight. Though. I don't think it's tight. Unless Aurelio gets to his right hip. Oh, there we go. Beerbaum pulls his head oh. up. Has Aurelio adjusted to try to get to his right hip? Beer bomb, yes. a little that blood, that sweat, yeah. slippery, able to get out. He stayed calm, he stayed relaxed, and he didn't panic. And that's key to get to. The folks sitting cage back, cage side have moved backwards to get away from this blood. Aurelio gets to his head. And you see some immediate panic in Aurelio. He knows he has to get off bottom. He knows he has to make a change. But Beer Bomb just dominating here. What a what a fight. Oh, look at the slippery. There's so much blood over it. It's just a slip and slide out this there. This match does not soak up any form of perspiration or blood. It will only get slipperier. This is absolutely incredible. Aurelio doing anything he can from underneath to survive. He's firing elbows back. Lyle Beerbaum opened up a huge, oh, oh another wow. big elbow from the top. I will say this, though, for as nasty as that cut is and as much blood is coming out, it is not going into the eye of Marcus Aurelio. No. Give referee Kevin Nix credit for letting this fight go on. As bloody and as ugly as it looks, there is nothing that no. is damaging Marcus Aurelio or impeding him from fighting. No, Kevin Nix doing a great job of not even breaking the action to check the cut because it is not impeding Marcus Aurelio at this moment. More elbows from the top from Lyle Beerbaum. The elbow coming forward. They are right in front of our broadcast position. It's so bloody and ugly. Jason Reinhardt is taking uh, he gets pictures with his phone over here. This is <laughs> this is brutality at its finest. Final minute of the second round. He's when got uh, fancy some blood pants splattered on me. No problem. Right. No when problem. Fancy Pants gets that elbow winded up and coming down, it truly is fair to call it a elbow. I mean, he brings that. Unbelievable. Marcus Aurelio is still working to close guard underneath, looking for any type of option. I would think as we wind down the final 30 seconds of round number two, Marcus Aurelio is going to, I guess, want to stay on the feet maybe at all costs because he is he is not having too many options on the bottom. And, and, he, and he's having trouble getting to top position as well. I would say just keep it on the feet. He has not threatened with any submissions from the bottom. His opportunity is from the feet or the top game. He's an excellent, he's one of the best top game guys in his prime, one of the best top game ga guys in the business. Can he get there? Final That's what we're going to find out in the third period. Final few seconds of the second round, a period that was easily dominated by Lyle Beerbaum. Dominant, now, dominant. are we talking about a 10-8 here with this nasty work? I am not I have a hard time doing the 10-8. 10-8 really is, do. yeah, 10 is a, a philosophy and a way of life. I don't give them out without enough. Let's take a, let's take a look at the action as uh, the uh, staff here clean the mats as quickly as they can, trying to wipe away this blood. As we see here, Lyle Beerbaum again, able to duck inside, get a takedown very easily. Once there, here's these nasty short punches and elbows that ended up opening up a nasty cut on Marcus Ray. Look at the blood just yeah. gushing out. Joe Stevenson even had to turn away from the screen. It was too ugly. Right, Joe they Stevens like, this is too much blood for me. <laughs> Lyle Beerbaum, a great round. We all say 10-9 even with the cut? I think so. I say 10-9. 10-9. All right, Marcus Aurelio still down. Lyle Beerbaum shows us the elbow. He promised it to us. He shows that's what he did. He's still got blood all over his back. When you're cut like this with all the blood and you're on your back and you're you know, trying to go for submission, it's very difficult. One kick for Marcus Aurelio in the red start the third and final round. It's been a fun fight so far if you're a fan of violence and gore. And you're watching the wrong sport if you're not at least I like, I like the strike in Aurelio. Yeah, as I expected, I, I think Aurelio probably wants to strike as long yeah. as he can. He, he wants to avoid that takedown. Something different. He's got to do Absolutely. something different. He should establish a jab. Like, there we oh, go. Nice. Right. Look at nice, Lyle's nice. nice right hand over the top. Lyle nice. Beerbaum now hits that takedown, brings the fight to again. the floor.
Lyle Beerbaum taking top position once again. Dominate. There's that short front elbow. Dominating from top position. Lyle Beerbaum just grinding away in the exact same position they were in in round two. So those fans over there that were already avoiding oh, blood. Now <laughs> Aurelio diving for the leg. It's so hard though with the slipperiness and the, and the blood and the sweat. It's so hard. This could be an incredible comeback win, but it doesn't, like you said, Look. Jason Reinhardt, just too difficult to grab on that. respect for Aurelio. I mean, what a warrior. They reset on the feet. Oh, nice like a fake takedown right. and hit beautiful. the overhand right. Great work beautiful. from Lyle Beerbaum. And he dives into the double leg again. They are on the floor yet again. Lyle Beerbaum grinding away a victory from the top. Lyle Beerbaum still in top position. Marcus Aurelius seated against the cage. He can at least use that fence to climb back up to the top if he can get some space. But right now, Lyle Beerbaum allowing him zero in terms of room. That cut is opening up again. Here come the elbows again. Lyle Beerbaum is just putting on an outstanding display of violence from top position. This is how you control a fight. You know, we talk about wrestlers, and I don't think of Lyle Beerbaum as a traditional wrestler, but we talk about wrestlers being in top position, and they're called laying prey artists. Yeah, you know, well, he's not laying and praying. Right. This Definitely. is what you like to see from somebody Absolutely. in top position. Staying Absolutely. busy, grinding away. Yeah. He's definitely not laying and praying. He is definitely uh, giving a drowning pound clinic here. Absolutely. Marcus Aurelia now a couple of cuts around the nose. Referee Kevin Nix gives a stern warning to Marcus Aurelia and says, you need to improve your position right now or this fight moving, is in danger of being stopped. He's moving, though. Aurelio's moving. It's not like he's not moving and uh, you know, defending himself. Beer bomb heard that warning. I think he's going for the finish. Big right hand. Left hands to the head, Lyle Beerbaum, as you said, Jason uh, Reinhardt, putting on a clinic. I just don't see where, uh, you know, he's not just laying there. The fight. Incredible work from Lyle Beerbaum on top right now, just grinding away. I think this fight is, is in danger of being over very soon. Marcus Aurelio, heart underneath it, rolling for an arm bar. Yeah, that's what I mean. Rolling for an arm bar. Lyle Beerbaum steps away to avoid the pressure, releases it. If he was in that, I mean, if he, if he, at least he's still going for things and being active, you know. I don't believe that the fight is in danger of being stopped. I, I don't agree with that. He's moving. Look, he's moving, he's striking, he's not He's not in danger right now of being, st of, of, of being stopped. Yeah, Marcus Aurelio is showing a ton of heart underneath. I am extremely Absolutely. impressed. I, I mean, you got to be impressed with both I fighters, mean, obviously. We're about putting on a clinic, but, you know, Marcus Aurelio receives a warning that this fight's about to be yeah. over and nearly secures an arm bar. Uh, yes, that's right. And, uh, you know, that's why I didn't understand when they say he's uh, in you know, danger of being stopped because well, all I see. Well, you're I a see, fighter. Well, <laughs> I just saw, uh, I don't know about it. I just see that he, he was moving, you know. He was constantly moving and, and working, you know. It wasn't like he was just laying there getting pounded. Yeah, final but, minute of the third and final round. It's, it's safe to say that if nothing changes, Lyle Beerbaum is cruising to an impressive Impressive, brutal decision victory over Marcus Aurelia. Another one of those nasty elbows Man. to the forehead. I think we're going to need some stitches cage side for Marcus Aurelio following this fight. What, what a stud Marcus Aurelio is, though, man. He is, you, you saw the left leg was high there for absolutely. a second. Absolutely. And what obviously a stud uh, in Lyle Beerbaum. I mean, you know, uh, to beat a high-level guy like, like Aurelio is just an amazing feat. Really is. And to beating a top Oh, that's nice going to be an up illegal kick. up kick there from Marcus Aurelio. Lyle Beerbaum is not happy. He wants to turn this into a brawl. Lyle Beerbaum, look at this. Lyle Beerbaum is upset. That was an obvious foul. He was on his knees. That was an illegal up kick. He's going to now lose he's a, take point a point as Marcus away, Aurelio. You know that? Like, like a point away, though? Look at the bloody face of Marcus Aurelio. Less than a minute to go. I think I think Lyle Beerbaum, he was angry for a second. I don't know if he's calmed down, but I think he wants to finish this on the feet after being... Oh, and he slips on a high kick. Could this be a huge mistake for Lyle Beerbaum? Marcus Aurelio, can he pull off the incredible come from behind? No! He tried. What a way to make a one-sided beatdown wow. exciting in the final minute. I mean, yeah. that... All credit to Marcus wow. Aurelia, the crafty veteran at 38 years old. He did Absolutely. everything he could to come back, and, and for a one-sided beatdown, that was a heck of a way to finish the fight. Absolutely.
Lau Bierbaum, an incredible performance. Vintage Lau Bierbaum, he's a free agent now. He was not happy with the strike force deal. He was not happy with, you know, how frequently they were using him and, and, and the fights that they were giving to him. He said, look, I'm free of that contract now. I want to go to the UFC. I want big fights. I want the best. And that is a way you make a statement. We're going to take a look at the third and final round action here from Lyle Bierbaum, who did an absolutely fantastic job of controlling this fight from start to finish. He sure did. Cover your eyes if uh, you're squeamish, but here was Lyle that Bierbaum was a nice again. Takedown yeah, that takedown. was a great fake takedown in the overhand right, and then got the takedown and got the fight to the floor. Sure. Once there, it was this brutal ground and pound. You can see the blood all over the canvas, the blood all over Marcus Aurelio. Marcus Aurelio, to his credit, was doing everything he could to win this fight. Arm bars, triangles, an illegal up kick at the end, two of them even. You know, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. That's what I always say. But uh, Lyle Bierbaum survived it, put on a great performance, and this is really, truly one of the best wins of his career. I know Marcus Aurelio is a little bit older at this point in time, but that still was one of the best wins in his career in terms of Absolutely. total domination from start to finish. It sure was. And what, what hard Aurelio showed, you know? Yeah, he so, did. It's I a mean, great performance by Lyle Bierbaum. I mean, awesome. And you can see Marcus <laughs> getting cleaned up, checking himself on the monitors, trying to make sure and see what was going on with his uh, nasty, nasty uh, cuts all over his body and face. There was blood everywhere. But uh, great work by Lyle Bierbaum. He wants to get in the UFC. He puts on a, another performance or two like that. He will certainly be there. Taking a little bit to tabulate the scores, there was the one-point deduction in the third and final round, which I imagine uh, must be a little bit of confusion in putting these scores together because there's really no other confusion. I think we could just walk in there and say unanimous decision uh, for Lyle Bierbaum and probably be safe with that. But we want to get the scores right. We want to know. Uh, because if anybody gave this to Marcus Aurelia, they should uh, they should be automatically fired on the spot immediately and, and never allowed to uh, even watch a fight again. But great performance by Lyle Bierman. Let's take it up to our cage announcer, Dallin Gettling, and get the official results of the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have a decision. Judge Jerry Griffin scores a fight, 30 to 26. Judge Henry Alex scores a fight 30 to 26, and Judge Ross Swanberg also scores a fight 30 to 26. Your winner by unanimous decision, Lyle Fancy Pants Beerbomb. So Lyle Beerbomb, unanimous decision winner. Let's hear what he has to say with Dallin Gedling. All right, I'm here with the winner, Lyle. That was a, a, a great match. For the most part, you were dominating. There were a couple times it looks like maybe you were in trouble. I cannot believe it. was Marcus Aurelio who had you in a deep guillotine. Were you even close to tapping? I trained with uh, Cody McKenzie. He has the, he has the Here's McKenzie a view from outside the, the our venue show. tonight it was here on the campus of Drury wow. University, Springfield. And then Missouri has played a great host to us thus far tonight. We've had an incredible night of action thus far. And look at the fights we have left. I can't believe it. It's yeah. right here at Show Fights, man. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll tell you what, I'm honored to be here. This is the 20th fight. I know you've been in all 20. This is the first show fight I've seen. Top-notch organization. We've seen great fights top to bottom. Great matchups. It's been fantastic. JT Tilly, the president, unbelievable. You know, does a great job. And, uh... My manager, Jason Chambers, he actually got an offer from the UFC before this fight, so against fight to Edson Barbosa, but I wasn't able to take it, so uh, hopefully my fingers are crossed and I'll be fighting in there soon. Right on. So you you had a fight offer. You declined. Was that because you had a commitment here, or what was the... You no, know, I uh, had some injuries. I had a broken foot beforehand, so... I wasn't sure if we wanted to say that yet, so I didn't want to ask you. So you, you've been training. It was a little bit hard because you had a broken foot, but obviously you didn't see it affect the fight at all. Is it completely recovered? Yeah, it's good to go. Right on. Well, UFC, he's ready. So come knocking. Jason Chambers is the man to call. Anybody you want to thank? Yeah, I want to thank my PJJ coach, uh, Bart Smith. I want to uh, thank all my guys in Spokane, Washington that I train with. All my sponsors, Mark Gatlin, Tax It Easy, Matt, uh, Matt Dawson from uh, Iron Master, and I want to thank my mom for making my uh, fancy pants. 